independence referendum needs to be agreed by the UK government. And it's not clear when the SNP wants it to happen. But First Minister Nicola Sturgeon made a statement of intent this morning as she announced plans to publish a consultation on a draft referendum bill as soon as next week. On the morning after the referendum, I said I would protect Scotland's ability to make that choice. In our programme for government, I committed to publishing a draft referendum bill. I am determined that Scotland will have the ability to reconsider the question of independence and to do so before the UK leaves the EU if that is necessary to protect our country's interests. So I can confirm... I can confirm today that the independence referendum bill will be published for consultation next week. That was Nicola Sturgeon today. Well, the other big news from the SNP conference this morning is that the party has elected a new deputy leader, or depute, as they say in Scotland. It's Angus Robertson, and he joins us now from the Congress. Angus Robertson, welcome back to The Daily Politics. Uh, you lost the Scottish referendum in 2014, but you want another one. You lo your side lost the Brexit referendum this year, but you want to try and thwart the Brexit process. Do you need to take remedial classes in democracy? Uh, you missed out the, the key important fact in there, Andrew, which was that 62% of people in Scotland voted to remain in the European Union. And as Democrats, uh, we believe that the people voted remain, then they should remain. Of but course, we voted as United that, Kingdom. Um, we didn't vote people, as, if you, we if didn't you, vote as Scotland me, or if, Wales if you, or England. We voted as the UK. If you would... If, if you'd be so kind as to let me finish answering your first question, Andrew, uh, it would also be fair to point out that in 2014, many people who voted no to Scottish independence did so because they were told that unless they did, we would find ourselves out of the European Union. Now, things have been turned on their uh, head. We are facing the prospect of being taken out of the European Union against the wish of the majority of people in Scotland, and that's why it behoves all Scottish political leaders to work together to find ways of protecting our place in Europe and that's why we've signalled that we're prepared to work with the UK government to ensure that that happens. The only problem with that though is that it takes a UK government to respect the majority of wishes of people in Scotland who want to remain in Europe and to work with the Scottish government to deliver that and there's no sign whatsoever that the UK government is prepared to do that. What would trigger a second Scottish referendum? Uh, so I think uh, for, for viewers down south, I think it's important to understand that there's a process underway in Scotland. The Scottish Government uh, now has uh, experts uh, advising on the different potential routes in which we could uh, protect Scotland's place in Europe. Is there a way, for example, of Scotland remaining within the single market while the rest of uh, the UK leaves? Are there ways of protecting our citizenship rights whilst the rest of the UK type takes another course? Now, we need to understand the answers to those questions, but we're looking for them. But we all know, and there's no disagreement about this, that there is a way in which Scotland can remain within the European Union, and that is as a member state. And that's sure. why the First Minister at the SNP conference announced that the, the route to doing that through a referendum, given that we live in a democracy, is the best way to do that, and we will prepare the groundwork in case there are no other ways in which we can protect Scotland's place in Europe. So let me try again. What would trigger a second Scottish referendum? I think if Scotland is taken out of the European Union against the wishes of the people of Scotland and the only way of protecting uh, our place in Europe is, to be, is by being a sovereign state, that is what's going to trigger a referendum. We've had a poll this morning that suggests that 55% of people in Scotland are in favour of another referendum if we face the prospects of a hard Tory Brexit. And that's exactly what we're heading towards at the present time. So it's not only about the choices that we make, it's also about the choices that the UK government makes. And Theresa May should have heard by now, if she hasn't yet, that the Scottish government and the SNP is deadly serious uh, when we say that we expect the voters of Scotland to be respected and the UK government to right. take their wishes seriously. But that rather depends on the Prime Minister and the Tory party respecting Scotland. Of course, we were told that Scotland is an equal partner in the UK, no less an equal partner. No, no, I understand partner. all There this. hasn't been a single iota let, yet. Well, let no, me the get government another doesn't, no, no, I've heard all this from program, you. I've I'm heard hoping, this many times. To help. No, well, I'm trying, to, I'm trying yet, to get some clarity. I'm trying to get through the rhetoric, which I've heard endlessly, 
and get some clarity. On the government's current timetable, we are scheduled to leave the EU at the beginning of 2019. If that timetable is adhered to, when will there be a second Scottish referendum? Well, I'm surprised you think that you're having answers from the UK government on anything to do with Brexit, because we sat in Parliament Why don't you this week and my we question? asked Cabinet Ministers and we asked Prime Minister. No, I don't think we know for certain when the UK is planning to leave the EU. I don't think we know what the conditions are uh, of the UK exiting. I don't think we know whether they want to remain within the single market. I don't think we know whether they're prepared if, uh, to right, guarantee well, the citizenship and rights of, of let UK Let me try citizens. and help you to answer the question. If it is clear that we will not be a member of the single market. We will have access to it, but we will not be a member the way we are now. Would that trigger a second referendum? I, I don't think there's any ambiguity about this whatsoever, so let me say this. I do not want Scotland to leave the European Union full stop. Not now and not in the future. I do not want to see a gap I, in I our membership. I know that, Mr. I want Robertson. Our position What's within the answer the single to my market. question? Well, the answer to the question is, I do not want us to leave the EU. So right. if it becomes clear that there is a timetable that will take us out on hard Brexit terms, detrimental to our economy, then I will support a Scottish independence referendum. Right. And if that needs to take place within the years before 2019, I'm in favour of that as well. And what if we're going out on soft Brexit terms, wherever that means? Would that mean you wouldn't trigger the referendum? Well, whatever you're, you're making the point yourself there, whatever that means. We don't yeah, well, know you used what hard Brexit. What does that mean to you? Time. What does hard Brexit mean to you? Well, it means, well, it means taking us out of the single market. It means right. having tariffs. So Scottish business, for example, the Scotch whisky industry, which is hugely important, uh, facing tariffs selling to other European mm -hmm. uh, countries. You, you, you've kind of made the point that I've been trying to underline, Andrew, which is we have so little understanding of what the UK government is actually right. trying to do with its negotiations with the rest of the EU. What right. we've started is a process which seeks to protect Scotland's place in mm -hmm. Europe. And if that means we have another referendum that will deliver an independent Scotland within the European Union, and right. that may be within a number of, uh, of years, I'm in favour of that, as is the SNP. Right. Uh, Scotland runs by far the largest fiscal deficit in the Western world. The price of oil has collapsed. The oil industry is on its knees. Your financial sector is in poor shape as well. You've got very slow growth and you couldn't tell us what the currency will be in an independent Scotland. Other than that, what is the economic case for independence today? Well, of course, this week we've learned that the UK is facing losing £66 billion in revenue. The pound is heading through the uh, That through was the a floor. project for your and, Treasury and report, Mr. Robertson, and you know and, that and, is dated to UK, back in April. And, What's the well, case for Scotland and, and, independence? And, and, the, and, the UK, and the UK economy is in heading in a direction where we can't even buy certain products on high street at supermarkets. <laughs> oh uh, nobody, we did not choose the circumstances in which we found ourselves. We voted to remain mm. within the European Union. The timetable that is being uh, forced by the UK government is one that is forcing people in Scotland <coughs> to a choice. Have we chosen all of the circumstances? No. Will all the economic uh, circumstances be ideal? Mm. No, they won't. Are they for okay. the UK? No, they're not. All right. So these are tough circumstances for everybody who is involved. The difference, though, is we have a democratic mandate in this country to remain within the European Union. And as Democrats, right. it behoves us to support can... the wishes of the voters right. of this country. Wearing your new hat as deputy, can I just ask you, I mean, I did ask you what the economic case was, but we'll probably come back to that. That, and I'll try and get an answer, but to just with your new role as deputy le leader, uh, this time last year the SNP was dining out on how it was going to be the real opposition in the Westminster Parliament. Now, a year later, we see that you've wasted £230,000 on frivolous early day motions, celebrating a constituent getting into the final 13 of Miss Scotland, the 50th anniversary of Star Trek, and the unveiling of a Christmas tree. That's your members putting these things down. Costs money. Uh, how is that being the real opposition? Goodness me. 
uh, a political party goes to Parliament and asks questions and Prime Minister's questions, turns up in committees, takes parts in debates and statements, and that's somehow something to be condemned. I know that other commentators, perhaps less partisan, have said that the SNP is now the effective opposition at Westminster, and week in, week out, I hold Theresa May and previously David Cameron to account asking the difficult questions uh, that the Labour Party, riven by internal division, is unprepared to do. Most neutral observers, Andrew, believe the SNP is doing a good job working at Westminster as the effective opposition, and my plan is to continue doing that so long as Scotland is part of the UK. Well, at least thanks to one of your early day motions, I did know it was the 50th anniversary of Star Trek. I never realised that. Angus Robertson from the conference in uh, Glasgow, the SNP conference, thanks for joining us.